All right, folks, I want to share with you today how I created the chipping in the door you see here. It's the same door, just lit different ways for two different reasons. We'll talk about that later. But normally I would do a hairspray chipping or like a liquid latex, but Vallejo has a product that I wanted to try out and see if I liked it better than the hairspray chipping method. And it's called chipping medium. <laughs> so at any rate, I apply it with an airbrush and um, over the top of this blue door and we'll follow along and you'll see the process. Let's go. But I started off with just an apple barrel blue that I mixed up in a cup, uh, watered down pretty well to get it through the airbrush. But you can see the bottle laying over there to the side of the airbrush booth. <laughs> so we're going to load some of the chipping medium into the airbrush. There's no instruction on the bottle of what PSI to run this through and I mean, there's no scientific formula. You just use enough air till it gets through the airbrush. <laughs> Pretty simple. And I'm checking on my glove here to make sure I got a good flow. I don't know that you would reduce this down with anything. I don't imagine you would. Um, it is a water. It is a water-based uh, product. It says on the bottle. I imagine you could water it down with with some distilled water, but I didn't do that anyway. So what I did is once I got the base coat onto the prop here, which is blue, then I went over it with a little bit of white to kind of dull it down a little bit and make it look uh, sort of aged or or uh, you know sun beaten. Uh, and once I put this chipping product on here I spray it on it, it comes out and there's a sound to it that's a little bit different than as if you would just be painting with regular paint it sounds a little bit more like it's not spitting it out but it, you'll see here in a minute when I show you the picture of how it lays down okay so you can see how it comes out it comes out kind of like that and it looks like oh you missed some spots but really you didn't I've got you know uh full coverage on there so it's it's kind of a weird sound and a weird feel but it's coming out of the airbrush you know <laughs> i know it is because i tested it on my glove to make sure that it was coming out and everything was good but you know so uh be mindful of that it's you know like i say it was my first time using this product and i didn't really know what to expect but we got it on there everything's laid down real nice and when it dries it'll dry totally clear you won't see any of that patchiness uh, that you saw as it was wet so now that we've got good coverage on there i rotated the door and and did it upside down and sprayed it you know both ways i'm mixing up a little vallejo flat green paint in a cup here with some distilled water and i'll spray that on the door remember this is the top coat of paint that's on the door we're going to chip this away and it's going to reveal the blue paint below to give it sort of a paint peel effect uh, and so i got to flip the door here to make sure i get all the nooks and crannies on the underside of the beams and stuff too that i modeled onto this door and by the way the stl file is available for this door on my website and etsy as well as the unpainted version that i can print out and ship to you to paint yourself. Uh, those are available on my Wits, Wetsy. <laughs> those are available on my my Etsy and my website. Oh, stay on track, stay on track. Uh, but you know, this was a uh, uh, interesting product to use, and I and I like it. I, I gotta say, I like it. It's not that expensive. Uh, I had to buy two of the small bottles because the one big bottle wasn't available. So <laughs> anyway, once. I got that paint on there, my, my top coat of paint that I'm going to peel away and let it dry, then uh, just move it over here to my other table. I'm kind of just showing it before and after of the rusting effect I did on this beam, uh, the sliding beam that the door actually goes into and slides. Pretty cool rust effect that I that I did, but that's another video. I've, I've done videos about that. So the main thing here, this is a water-based uh, medium. And these are water-based paints. So we want to take just a little bit of water and with different, you know, hardnesses and different style brushes, dip it in the water, sort of knock the excess off a little bit and just go through and start brushing away real slowly the parts that you want to take away and reveal the blue paint beneath. It's kind of like an eraser but with water and you're using bristles of a brush. <laughs> so, but, but it's a really cool technique. And, and when it comes to using this over the hairspray, 
this definitely does offer more control than the hairspray. The hairspray tends to come off in bigger, wider areas and, it, and there's not as much control. I can get in here with a tiny, little, teeny, tiny brush and just take away a little teeny tiny area. The hairspray is a little bit more like a bull in a china closet. You know, uh, you get a great effect with it. Don't get me wrong. I, I love it. But I will probably stick to this method um, because first of all, there's more control, but it's really not that expensive. It's like eight bucks for a small bottle. And it really is going to last a long time because you're airbrushing it on. And so... When you airbrush anything, you use a lot less of it. Uh, so we're just kind of going back and forth here. And I'm in my little zone on the table, just enjoying the time I have that's quiet. And I can be in my own head and work on something artistic. And I just kind of step back and you can always add more water to this. Take your time. Go slow. You can't put it back. So... <laughs> think about it before you take it off uh you know and and it's not uh it's not hard at all it's just a little bit of water and some brushes and you're just creating whatever patterns you want you can use scratchy brushes you can use soft bristle brushes you can use you know uh, chip brushes but since we're in a small area here on this door uh, and we've got little nooks and crannies and stuff. I'm just using a, a couple different size brushes you can see there. And that's really it on this. You know, you just kind of take your time and go through here and and hit all the spots that you want to peel. And I and I used I used a reference image from Google because even though you might think you know how paint peel looks or it works or you know it's better to have for me a reference image because I can kind of get lost in what I'm doing and then start to think what I'm doing looks like crap. And then I go back to a reference image and I'm like, Oh no. Okay. It doesn't look like crap. This is, this is pretty realistic. So, you know, um, as far as the, the, the way the length and the direction and the, you know, way that you're scraping the paint away, uh, you can vary all of that with your uh, brush stroke here and the type of brush bristle that you're using. So you can create some really cool layered effects with this. And and I really had a good time doing this. I think it's a, a great uh, product. And it's not, I mean, I mean, Vallejo didn't pay me to make this video. I'm not paid by anybody to do anything. <laughs> but but I really do like this product. And I, and I definitely, like I said, I bought two bottles of it. And, and I dig it. Um, we're going to, later here in the video get into I was kind of torn between thinking the whole time I was doing this I was thinking in the back of my mind I know I need to black wash this black washing when I black wash something it usually comes at the end uh, of the process but being that this top coat is now uh you know chipping medium and will dissolve away in, <laughs> in water am I going to black wash this or am I going to just do some you know pigments to sort of uh you know get darkness and all the crevices and, and, and things like that but I took a chance and and I went with what I know and uh, I'll share with you how I did that also using some um Mod Podge aerosol spray which is like my go-to my go-to sealer it, it's really cool I, I use that often that's such a nice product to have on hand and it dries fast and seals nicely, but we'll get to that in a minute. So you can start to see how the effect is taking shape on the door, what it's, you know, how it's changing the appearance of the door and the paint. Um, remember this, I guess if you scratch down far enough with enough water, you're going to take the blue paint off too. But, but um, you would be able to go ahead if you wanted and you were worried about that after you laid the base coat down and in this case I laid my base coat of blue I could have hit that with the Mod Podge aerosol also sealed it up then sprayed over the top of that the chipping spray then my top coat of green then I wouldn't have to worry at all about any water getting below the chipping medium into the blue paint and taking it off also since this is all water-based paint you know at, at some point you would take away probably some of the the blue base coat and reveal. Um, I've got a primer under there, uh, a Vallejo. I think I used a, a gray, gray primer under there. So at some point you would probably work your way down to the, 
to the primer if you just kept rubbing. <laughs> but uh, you could avoid that if you wanted to go ahead and take the time and, and add the Mod Podge aerosol spray in there. But at any rate, you know, we're just continuing the process here, you know, brushing away, uh, dragging away little bits of paint in various patterns and revealing the blue uh, paint below. And just take your time, have a good time with this. You know, it's a, it's, it's not a fast process, but if you want the outcome, you've got to go through the process. And here's the spray that I use. I show this in a lot of videos. Um, this is a, a great spray. It dries quickly. You can buy it in a glossy or a matte finish. I, I always have the matte finish on hand. I seldom ever have a need for gloss. So I'm going to be brave right here. <laughs> I, this is how much I trust the, <laughs> the Mod Podge aerosol. I've sprayed this generously and we're going to go through and we're going to put the black wash on and I'm just testing it in some small areas at first. I'll, I'll brush it on and I won't move it around with my brush. I'll get it on there where I want, give it a couple quick, uh, you know, passes with the brush to get it where I want it. And then I'll get to dab it uh, off, you know, with the microfiber tile to leave behind the patterns that I want and kind of work it with a sponge. I won't spend a lot of time on the black wash, moving it and, and creating, you know, stipples and stuff like that, because I, I really don't want to take the chance that I overwork it and then the wash begins to affect the chipping medium and the paint below. So I, I don't overly excessively spend a lot of time on stippling. I get the black wash on there, get it where I want it, do a couple quick passes with the sponge and I'm good. I, I just don't overwork the area because I don't want to take the chance that uh, I ruin it, <laughs> which I wouldn't ruin it. I just throw some rust over the top of it. <laughs> so uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to ruin something like this, honestly. Um, and because we're after sort of a ruined effect, but you don't want to just, you know, ruin it and then try to cover it up. You you want to ruin it in a, in a, in a process that's controlled, if that makes sense. So it's all about control. Uh, so you can see here that I'm going in there. And these hemostats, these are great tools to have. You can buy them on Amazon for like 12 or 15 bucks for a set. I think I got five of them in a, in a set. And they're just really awesome because you can clamp your little sponges down and get those sponges pressed into little nooks and crannies and really really control once again it's about control the application and control the outcome uh, control the effect and keep my fat fingers out of the way of everything so they're really really a great tool for for this type of project uh, for crafting in, in general they're just great to have you can see i've got a variety of brushes and things on hand so I don't have to keep getting up during the process and finding stuff. I just, whatever I know I, I'm going to need because, you know, you do this, you do this over and over. You kind of know what you're going to need. I, I keep it right there with me on a microfiber towel. And you can see the microfiber towel is <laughs> my wife, my wife gets mad, but now all the crappy microfiber towels in the house by default come to my room. <laughs> <laughs> I've ruined enough of them that they now just belong to me. <laughs> so uh, anyway, you can see we just go through and work the work the black wash in here with the sponge. And the black wash at the end really, really helps this come together. And I have different size sponges and different shape sponges. That one I was using probably was a little wet, so I changed it out for a drier one. Because once again, I just don't want an overly abundant amount of water on this because everything is water based. And I want to ruin the hours that I've already spent on this door. <laughs> all in all, I think if I didn't stop and do the videos and, and, and do all the different things that I have to do throughout the process of making making a video and, and, a, and a product, I think this door probably from the time I got the primer on to complete it, I think it probably would have took me maybe... Well, three hours, something like that. It's not a long time, but it's a considerable amount of time. It's an investment of time that, you know, um, th like I say, there's no way around. If you want the outcome, you have to 
you have to pay the process and and that's what it is there's no fast fast way to get this result and man that's the result i'm after look at that photograph so nice man let's get on to some rusting um you've heard me say it before i do have vallejo pigments to rust but i find almost all the time these soft chalk pastels ground up in a neutral bullet applied with ipa isopropyl alcohol work incredibly well i use the isopropyl alcohol because it sets and dries quickly and it allows me to get the texture out of the pigments that I want. I can sort of cake them on there kind of clumpily and then work them around with the alcohol in a sponge and the, and the alcohol dries quickly and it leaves that those pigments with a raised sort of texture that really, really look awesome and photograph so nice. At the end of the day, I want this to photograph nice. It's one thing to have a door washed and painted and look textured with, you know, wash and paints and stippling, but the light isn't going to catch all the different textures in there because there's no textures in there. It's just washes. But when you start applying textures, uh, different depths of, you know, layers of paint peeling away, things like that, the photography becomes even better because the way the light interacts with all those hard, you know, surfaces, uh, and you get a much better photograph. So at any rate, uh, soft chalk pastels in the Nutribullet work fantastic. There's seldom a time where I take out my Vallejo pigments, not because they're not good. They're great. They're fantastic, but they do cost more. And lately it seems they're tougher to get. They take longer to get on Amazon anyway than, than, uh, then the soft shack pastels, I'll have those the same day. I'll grind them up and I'll put them in those dollar store plastic bins and I'll have enough to last me three years. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I have to weigh my, my options. I mean, if the effect is the same or better, why, why would I spend the, the money to get uh, the other product? And I don't want to sound like I'm knocking the other product cause I'm not, I love Vallejo products. Absolutely love them. So to sort of reiterate my point on light, if you look at the lighting in the background of this figure uh, or this portrait on the door, we've got a beautifully colored, nicely textured door. The light is playing off of it a little bit. It's out of focus and soft. We, you can definitely see textures and, and, and the way the light interacts with the, the chipped and the rusted door. But let's take a, take a look at another picture, the Jason picture where the door is more in focus and side lighting and top lighting and see how uh, that light configuration with side lighting and top lighting bring out the hard textures of the products that we put onto this door and what the diff. And I mean to say that, that sometimes you see dioramas that are made out of like cardboard cutouts and alley scenes and subway scenes and sewer scenes of these cardboard dioramas, you will not get the same photograph out of something like that as you will if you take the time to learn how to do you know a process like this not knocking those things either but the 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 photographic outcome is totally different uh so when you take the time to learn to apply a process like this you're going to get a much better photograph but anyway hey folks i appreciate you watching and sticking around to the end like and subscribe to the channel follow me on all the different social media platforms including tiktok until it's banned hopefully it's not but i'm on there too check out my website insightfulimagery.com and etsy facebook instagram and here on youtube take care folks